guys, welcome to Nyaya Cooking. In this video, we are going to attempt a recipe that is very close to the hearts of the Indian or Malay community in Malaysia. Well, we love our curries, you all know that, but there is this one special dish that is eaten with rice, a very special kind of rice, and also curry. And this video has been requested by many of you on our website nyayacooking.com and this is how to prepare nasi biryani. Nasi biryani is a special rice dish that goes very well with various side dishes but today I'm going to keep it simple I'm going to make a special chicken curry that goes in nasi biryani and the last time I made it it was amazing the whole house smelled of nasi biryani but I never regretted it it was so so delicious and I was constantly craving for nasi biryani again and again so I hope that you will love this recipe but before I begin I just want to tell you that there are many different types of nasi biryani around the world in Malaysia we do it slightly different I tweaked the recipe a little and added my own ingredients so let's look at them there are two parts to this recipe. First of all, the rice. Now here I'm using basmati rice, milk, butter, and for aromatics, pandan leaves, cumin seeds, star anise, cardamom, cloves, salt, cinnamon, and saffron. That is basically what you need for the rice. As for the chicken curry, we will have the chicken of course. I'm using chicken thighs, tomatoes, onion, Greek yogurt, all normal yogurt would also do butter and again for aromatics star anise cinnamon stick ginger garlic pandan leaf cardamom coriander powder salt and sugar chili powder cumin turmeric black pepper fennel seeds the list of ingredients may be pretty lengthy but trust me it's going to be really delicious and it's going to be worth it now let's move on to cooking the rice first but before that let's marinate the chicken with yogurt so just scoop all the yogurt into the bowl and let it coat the chicken pieces you will notice that the yogurt that i'm using has really thick texture but that's because i'm using greek yogurt and if you're familiar with yogurt you will know that greek yogurt is so much more creamier compared to the normal yogurt and there is also another reason which i'm going to write in my website so head on to the website for the full recipe and also explanation on the other ingredients so let's just continue mixing making sure that the yogurt coats the chicken and then we can just leave it in the fridge and this would also help to tenderize the meat one of the main ingredients for delicious nasi biryani is ghee or clarified butter now of course you wouldn't want to go to the shop to just buy a whole tin of clarified butter and i'm going to show you how to do it very quickly by using just unsalted butter and make sure the pan is heated at very low heat I am also going to add the butter which is meant for the chicken so that we can prepare clarified butter or ghee together and save some time clarified butter or ghee is simply clean butter so when heating butter for about 10 to 15 minutes white solids will appear which we will need to remove through a sieve now what's left will be ghee now with about one and a half tablespoon of ghee, we are going to cook the aromatics. So we have some cloves, cardamom, star anise, cinnamon, cumin seeds. And just saute this until it's really fragrant. You can start smelling it. Meanwhile, we're going to have also some onion slices with half an onion. Well, the rest we are going to use for the chicken this will be used for the rice just gonna half it again now again we're going to saute this at low heat until the onions are slightly uh, wilted and then we can add the rice at this point of time do not forget pandan leaves as well once the ingredients come together, you can already smell the aroma. Then we will add rice.
and then finally milk now in Malaysia evaporated milk is commonly used but evaporated milk is basically uh, reduced milk so I substitute um, evaporated milk with just normal cow's milk and that would also do the trick or if you want you can also prepare evaporated milk beforehand by reducing the milk uh, for the exact amount you can head on to the website so a lot of things I do not really explain here because it might be too long then and everything is all on the website <laughs> it's newyacooking.com if you do not know it yet and we're going to top it up with a bit of water and remember the ratio of liquid to rice is always 2 to 1 let's bring this to boil and then once it starts boiling bring the heat low again and let it simmer and then we just allow the rice to cook so the only thing that we did not add to the rice is the saffron but I'm going to show you uh, later on what you're going to do with it and now we can finally proceed with the chicken now to prepare the chicken or to cook the chicken I'm using my trusted stau uh, pot uh, it was given to me during the gourmet trip by JRE if you want to know more about it uh, you have to check out my blog. I wrote a whole article on JRE and if gourmet food is really worth it I love the whole trip and they even gave me this pot so it's all good and Again, this is not a sponsored video, but I truly truly love the pot So now that uh, the pot is here slightly heated up. I'm going to pour the rest of the ghee It really heats up very quickly and then we will have star anise, cinnamon stick, cardamom, coriander powder, chili powder, cumin, turmeric, black pepper and also fennel seeds all at once. Give it a few quick stirs. And then I'm going to press the garlic Oh the smell is really coming up And then ginger No the ginger really shouldn't go into the garlic presser but I want it fast, that's why I think it's really really easy and lastly, onion You can of course add more ghee as you can see I use very little ghee but uh, it's also because I wanted to reduce the usage of ghee and again this pot is just so amazing it cooks so well even with very little oil or in this case ghee then I'm going to add tomatoes so once we add tomatoes it's going to release a bit of water and remember we also have pandan leaves so we're going to cook until the tomatoes are slightly softer and then we'll add the chicken at this very moment, I just feel like having a bowl of rice and immediately eating this But we have to add the chicken So, in goes the chicken Now I'm just going to uh, try to scrape out uh, as much yogurt as I can But don't worry because we're going to add the yogurt later on anyway I just want the chicken pieces to have more spices around it Okay, there's still a bit of yogurt left but we're not going to do anything with it first now just quickly stir Mmm, you can smell it Oh, you cannot smell it but I can smell it <laughs> Smells fantastic Now Greek yogurt is really amazing because it can stand high heat That means it wouldn't curdle uh, like normal yogurt So it's really great in cooking and if you know, I just found my love in Greek yogurt because I came back from a vacation uh, in Greece. Uh, that was fantastic. We will use another ingredient later, which is from um, 
grease but we'll keep that to the end of the video now that this is stirred wow everything looks so so good okay so just stir it for another three minutes to five minutes you know get the spices really into the chicken and then we're going to add water At this point of time, increase the heat, let it boil and then bring the heat low, then we're going to let the curry simmer. So now we can also add the rest of the yogurt. As for the saffron, we're going to heat it up in a pan without any water or oil. And then we're going to get the extract of the saffron to get the colour. It's really really small and you can't really see it. Add a bit of boiling water, really really hot water and then just let it sit for a while and that way we get to extract the colour, this beautiful colour from saffron. For garnishing, let's fry some cashew nuts in oil. Like any typical biryani dish, we are also going to fry some raisins. Now keep the heat low and only fry about a minute or so. Now that the rice is fully cooked, we are just going to remove the lid and remember the saffron that we had? We have this extract, the colour. We are just going to pour it onto the rice and then cover the lid, let it sit, let it do its thing. Now we move forward to the chicken. It has been boiling for about 20 minutes I'd say and just adjust the taste by adding a bit of salt and sugar, you know, enhance the taste and then it's good. The tomatoes are really soft because I added it at the beginning of the cooking process. If you want, you can always add tomatoes later on or right now add another tomato. I really like it when the tomatoes is a, uh, a bit soggy, then it really, you know, the, the flavors from the tomatoes are really incorporated into the curry itself. Um, so as I mentioned, a bit of salt. And also sugar. So let's stir it and there's no better way to find out if the curry is up to your liking by tasting it. Mmm, so so good. Oh, it's slightly spicy, not too much. Yum, so delicious. So chicken is finally ready, just gonna move it aside. Smells so good. Mm. Now one tip that I can give to you is not to pour the saffron water quite everywhere or else the water would really soak into the rice and then you get a whole pot of you know yellow colored rice. So have it one corner and then when you fluff it up there will be a good mixture of you know yellow colored rice and also uh, white colored rice. Gonna scoop some and place it right at the side of the plate. Now, doesn't that look good? Don't you want a bite? I want the whole thing right now. <laughs> and as for garnishing, the last touch to this dish, we will add a bit of uh, raisins and also. Cashew nuts. Now remember earlier I said there is another Greek product and these are these raisins. Uh, it's really really delicious compared to the normal raisins. They are also delicious but this one is just so small and cute and sweet. So good. Fried shallots. And just to brighten things up, I like to add a few slices of chilli. And lastly, just a bit of spring onions. Because the whole dish is, you know, yellowish, reddish, so a bit of green would be nice. It was quite a journey to prepare this whole dish, but you know, so many of you guys requested this and I bet we share the same opinion that this dish is so delicious. But to prove myself right, I have to try this dish for you. It's really tender. Then a bit of curry. Let's just have this first. Mmm. Mm-hmm. So good. 
Then we have the rice as well. Bit of cashew, uh, one cashew nut. Mm -hmm. This surely brings back a lot of memories. Let's just try the rice itself. The rice is flavorful. The curry is, you know, slightly salty. Um, just nice, a very good balance of saltiness and spiciness. Chicken is tender. Then the um, tomatoes are so soft. I love soft tomatoes. <laughs> you have to try this dish. It really takes a bit of time to prepare a lot of ingredients, but it's honestly very simple. Mm -hmm. Guys, try this dish and remember to send me photos of this dish once you have tried it. And if you love what I do, you want to be a part of it, come join us on patreon.com slash nyonyacooking and there you can support us uh, with our work and also have a bit of an uh, overview on what we do behind the scenes to make this whole show possible on YouTube. So before that, just another mouthful before I go. And those of you who are really hungry looking at me right now, Mm. So, so, so yummy. <laughs> now, give me a thumbs up while you're here and also subscribe to the channel if you have not for more recipes like this. I can't wait to see you on the YouTube channel or also on our website. Until then, I wish you happy cooking!